thing I have learned as a servant of Jesus is to be sure to ask God for guidance in my Christian walk and then be patient to listen to his answer before acting. In my zeal to serve God, I sometimes forget to ask for God's plan and assume he will bless my good intentions. He may not. He must be consulted about everything. I found this out the hard way, just like Hezekiah. We are called to be followers of Christ, not leaders. Jesus is the one that stands behind us saying, this is the way, walk in it. It can be easy to become prideful and head out in our own life, forgetting it was Jesus who gave it all to us in the first place. We begin to believe that operating in our own strength and intellect is all we need. We don't mean to do it. It's just easy to take Yahweh's victories and attribute them to our works of righteousness or intelligence or take for granted his anointing and favor. It's easy to make this mistake when we are blessed. It's also easy to make this mistake when we are fearful or impatient. For some reason, our sense of self-preservation takes over. It is at this very moment that we can forget to ask God for help and take over situations ourselves. Urgency spurs us into action and we forget to stop, pray, and listen. This has happened to me too many times. In a time of serious illness, God trained me to pray about everything, even the little things. He had my full attention and sometimes I still forgot. Throughout my life, he often disciplines me to remember to listen and brings me back to obedience in this matter once again. Stop, pray, and listen. In lesson three, we see the king readying Jerusalem for an upcoming attack from the Assyrian army. Yahweh is training Hezekiah to pray about everything. Let's check in with Isaiah. Year six of Hezekiah's reign, 722 BC. Samaria has fallen. They have been under siege for the past three years. The northern kingdom of Israel is no more, just as Yahweh had said that day to King Ahaz by the Fuller's Field. It's only a matter of time until the Assyrian army turns its full attention to us and Judah. Year 14. It has been eight years since I have written in this journal. So much has happened. King Sennacherib of Assyria has moved into Judah and is laying siege against the fortified cities. Hezekiah held a meeting last week with his commanders, engineers, and mighty men to stop the water from Gihon Spring outside the city and instead divert the water through an underground tunnel into the city of David proper to a pool inside the city walls. If the Assyrians are coming to besiege Jerusalem, they will find no water outside the city. Many of the people of Jerusalem helped to stop up the springs in the brook while the engineers started the process of digging the tunnel from both ends. How are they going to meet in the middle? Year 14, 6th month. The entire city is involved in fortifying our defenses. They have rebuilt the walls, raising them as high as the towers, and also constructed an entirely new wall outside of the old one. The water tunnel has been completed, and water is now flowing into the city of David. The men covered the spring outside of the walls so that the Assyrian army would not have water when they arrived. It has repaired the military armory and stocked it with weapons and shields. He also has set military captains over every single man in the city. Most of the people from the countryside in Judah have pulled into the stronghold of Jerusalem for protection. There are people sleeping everywhere. The Assyrians have now conquered Ashdod and the cities of the Philistines to the southwest. The waters of the Assyrian River have now flowed into Judah too. Of our 46 strong cities, only a handful are left. Our strongest city outside of Jerusalem, Lachish, is completely surrounded now by the forces of King Sennacherib. Hezekiah is starting to panic. He sent the Assyrian king this message. I have done no wrong. Turn away from me. Whatever tribute you require, I will pay. 
So Hezekiah was requested to pay 300 talents of silver, 30 talents of gold. He's giving Sennacherib all of the silver found in the king's house and in the temple. He stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and the pillars and sent them to the king of Assyria at Lachish. I certainly hope Hezekiah prayed about this. Year 14, sixth month, third day. Yahweh gave me words for Hezekiah today, words I will not enjoy delivering, but yet I must share with him. Jerusalem is in a fright. The busy city sits in silence, and the war has caused a famine. Provisions are scarce due to the Assyrian army plundering the countryside farms. The men have been slain with fear. The leaders from the other fortified cities in Judah have left their posts, fleeing to Jerusalem and leaving the abandoned cities defenseless. These leaders are still so distraught that they are of no help to Hezekiah. They cannot draw the bow. It is as if our hands are tied from extreme fear. I have been weeping bitterly at our situation. I am in seclusion asking all those around me to let me grieve, as the serious nature of our situation dictates. Our enemies trouble us and wear us down, and our friends don't even know how to help. It is the Lord himself coming against Judah, as was foretold with the Assyrians, being the agent of Yahweh to discipline the country for the sins of Ahaz. The enemy, aided by the Medes and the Persians, has cut off the supply lines into the city. The weakness of Judah, our nakedness and inability to protect ourselves, is now exposed. Because our leaders have fled many of the other cities under siege, a large amount of the military weapons have been confiscated by the Assyrians. I have written the exact words I am to deliver to Hezekiah on the Holy Scroll. This is basically what Yahweh said. The people of Jerusalem are putting their confidence in their own abilities instead of the strength of Yahweh. In our preparations for war, such as stopping up the well and making the tunnel, fortifying the walls, and building up the armory, they have placed their confidence in their own plans without even asking Yahweh what to do. They did not request from him a blessing upon their endeavors. They saw no need for it. Second, the people helped fortify the city because it was the rich city and their own houses were in it, not because it was the holy city and God's house was in it. God is the maker of Jerusalem, and it is his holy city. Any changes made in it should have been approved by him. Further, they have failed to thank God for his provisions, even in hardship. Third, the people have failed to seriously acknowledge the reason for God's discipline coming against Judah, not even realizing that this war with the Assyrians was exactly that. When God decrees his judgments, he expects and requires that his people humble themselves under his mighty hand, that we tremble when the lion roars. In the day of adversity, consider his ways. They mock and celebrate amidst the chaos, caring not if they were to die and not realizing the seriousness of their situation. I have asked others to pray for me as I deliver this word to Hezekiah. I'm going to remind him that in the prophecy given to his father Ahaz, God foretold that he was calling the river of the Assyrian army to flow over the entire land of Judah, but only up to the neck, Jerusalem. Jerusalem will not fall. Year 15, third month. Hezekiah listened carefully to God's correction and also was strengthened by the reminder of God's prophecy. He then called all the people into the square inside the city gate and spoke to them confidently, giving them encouragement. Do not be dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him, for there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God, to help us and to fight our battles. It is amazing to me how people love Hezekiah just as they did King David. They were strengthened by his words. King Hezekiah has been quoting King David from Psalms 32. 6 and 7. 
encouraging the people. Surely, when the mighty waters rise, they will not consume us. You are our hiding place. You protect us from trouble and surround us with the songs of deliverance. Year 15, fourth month. There are rumors that Shibna, a chief steward or governor over the house of Hezekiah, is collaborating with the enemy for personal gain. I have never cared for him. He is full of pride and vanity and is not a follower of Yahweh. He's Phoenician, not even an Israelite. He has been whispering in Hezekiah's ear way too long. Oh, how we have prayed finally. God has removed him from his post and given his position to Eliakim by the word of the Lord to Hezekiah. Shibna is now demoted to the position of scribe, but I'm sure Hezekiah is watching his every move. God has warned Hezekiah about him, and I can't believe he will be in Judah much longer. In a moment of weakness, Hezekiah panicked and trusted his own intellect and plans instead of asking Yahweh what to do. But Hezekiah was known to be a man of strong faith. How could this have happened? Why didn't he go to God first, asking for direction before making plans with his advisors to fortify the city? Or include his spiritual advisors, such as Isaiah, in the meeting? His ideas were certainly well thought out and seemed to make sense, but they were not God's ideas. Oftentimes, our plans to solve problems that arise in our own lives are good ones, but they are not God's plans. Maybe Hezekiah was listening too much to ungodly advisors like Shebna. Maybe his fears were causing him to make poor choices. No one knows. What we do know is that he was so busy tending to the physical needs of his people, he forgot to attend to their spiritual needs. He forgot to encourage the people with the truth and honor Yahweh with his trust. In the end, though, he received the words of correction from Yahweh with humility. His faith was strengthened by Isaiah's prophecy. And once again, he picked up the mantle of spiritual leadership and encouraged the people. Did you know that you can now visit the original city of David in Jerusalem? As we speak, they are continuing to excavate the area. There, you can see walls built by Hezekiah and walk through his tunnel. The inscription carved into the rock halfway tells the story of the two tunnels meeting. We were actually able to meet the renowned archaeologist Eli Shukran, who excavated the Pool of Siloam. Don't miss the short videos on the City of David and Hezekiah's tunnel. I just love, love, love studying Hezekiah and, and all the things of the Lord. And what it reminds me of is there's God's people since the beginning. Satan wants them dead. God keeps them alive. Satan wants them dead. God keeps them alive. It's all through the scriptures. And Hezekiah is a perfect example of that. And so now we get to the point in the study where the Assyrians, Satan, is trying to kill of God's people. And God's going to keep him alive. And he does it this time by creating a tunnel from Gion Springs to, su- to supply life and water to Jerusalem so that they can survive up to the neck. In Isaiah 8, it says up to the neck, but it doesn't take them out. God keeps them alive. And you think about the engineering. We've been there. You walk in that tunnel. It's granite. I, they didn't have dynamite. They didn't have carbide tip drills. I'm not exactly sure how they pulled it off, but they start digging on one end. I don't know how long it took, must have been years. Somebody started on another, on the top. And can you imagine the moment in time when you heard the scratching and the noise? They figured it out. I mean, they figured it out how to get these guys to meet in the middle and to give life to Jerusalem and to the people and to God's people. It's a crazy story. And there's even a plaque. I think it's, it, it, Patty shows it in the, in the Bible study of the place where they actually met. But once again, it's just another example of Satan wants to kill God's people and God keeps them alive. Satan wants them dead and God keeps them alive and it goes on and on. And it's just another example of that. We will find out in lesson four that Hezekiah's correction from Yahweh through Isaiah was given just in time. The big showdown is about to begin. 
and the lover of my soul. Creator God, He 